Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the latest installment of MSD's March Animal Health Series, where tonight we're going to be talking about all things coccidiosis. I'm Helena Madden, I'm one of the ruminant veterinary managers with MSD, and tonight I'm joined by Seamus Quigley and Connor Garrity. So we're up here in the best county in Ireland, which is County Galway, of course. Seamus, would you mind giving us a little bit of a background to the farm and your, your system you're running here first before we get going? Yeah, we're farming here in a husk group on the slow County Galway. Um, sucklers, uh, we're running sucklers here and we keep the, um, all the heifers onto beef. We sell some of the bullocks and we're buying in store cattle and killing them for finishing after that. Brilliant. Okay, so we're really going to try and dive into coccidiosis here this evening. So, Connor, I'm going to start with you being the vet and the, the expert. What is coccidiosis and what effect does it have on animals? So coccidiosis is a parasite um, and it invades the wall of the intestines. and It multiplies there before it releases its um, spores or, or, or eggs, if you want to call them, and that damages the wall of the gut and then it's often associated with a lot of bleeding. Uh, which farmers will notice as either black scour or maybe frank blood. But the damage it does to the wall of the intestine will, uh, first of all, apart from the initial sickness, will cause them to have ill thrift for quite a long time afterwards. And basically, they'll never reach their potential. So essentially, that is it. And because of that, then, what are the sort of signs we might see with coccidiosis? So the, the most common signs is a black scour, or sometimes it mightn't be black if, if the blood hasn't started. You might see some calves do a lot of forcing or have tenesmus, as we call it. And um, obviously, some calves then will be more prone to pneumonia as a result. Um, you'll have a, a small number of calves in a group that will show clinical signs, but you have a lot more calves in the group that will be affected, but won't have the clinical signs, but they'll still have the lack of thrive. So when we treat for coccidiosis, in a, where we have one or two calves in a group, we tend to recommend you treat the entire group. And how common would you say it is? Uh, it's very common uh, and has been for, for decades. I suppose uh, over the last 20 years, we probably have a little bit better uh, since the advent of ecoxin. We have, we have better means of treating it now. Um, and also we understand the epidemiology of it better so we can treat strategically in wh where, we have known, where we have known exposure. So we can treat the parasite before it breaks out and causes the damage to the gut. Uh, whilst, once the calves are exposed, um, they, they'll have an immunity to it. So people think it's, it's, it's kind of like a vaccine, but it's not. It's allowing, it, allowing exposure, but treating before they get the clinical signs. Yeah, yeah. so that's important in the principle of treatment, which we'll, we'll yeah. come back to as well a bit on, on later. <coughs> but Seamus, just to come on to you then, would you have had a history of coccidiosis on the farm or any trouble with it in the past? Yeah, we, we have. We're 20 years using Vicoxin, but if we don't, if we let, treat it 30 cattle and let out, we'll say, 32, the two that didn't get out have it, would have it within two to three weeks. It's definitely in the land because there about three years ago I was going away for two days and I let out a bundle and there was two not done and I wasn't two days gone and one of the beasts had it, the calf had it. So it's definitely in the, in the land. So we're 20 years using it and to be honest we don't let calves out without being treated with Ficoxin. And that's a good thing you mentioned there. Um, and just back to you, Connor. Where might they pick it up if they're going to pick up Ficoxin? So they can, they can pick it up in housing or they can pick it up in paddocks. Um, every farm will be different that way, so w we know that in Seamus' farm that they, they always get it in the sheds and, but then when they go outside, if you get a wet night, that little bit of reduction in immunity in the calf will bring on the clinical signs, but they have it already and that's why uh, Seamus always treats them at around between three and four weeks of age. So once they're exposed, before clinical signs is the ideal time. Some farms then will get it in paddocks, so treating them before they go out wouldn't be the answer for them. Um, you know, you'd have to have that discussion with your vet and try and isolate where the exposure is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Seamus said, what's your kind of approach to the system for when you might dose them or, or yeah, anything like that? Yeah, we, well, tagging, the minute they're tagged, anything around here that has a tag is done for Vicoxin. And that's, you're talking about two to three weeks in the afternoon born, and that's, we don't, if they have a tag going out, <laughs> they're done for Vicoxin. But I wouldn't go without using it, to be honest, because calves go back like calf goes back six or eight months when he gets it like it really is hard on the whole system for them yeah yeah and you like you said earlier on as well it's not just the individual ones with blood scour it's going to yeah. affect the yeah, whole group yeah, yeah yeah you know and you'd always make sure to to, to do the whole batch of them because you've yeah. had bad experiences in the past even just yeah, missing connor out a couple of them connor always says when one has it it's there it's yeah. you know what i mean it's 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 in that group or whatever so it's a case of just treating them all and when you do anytime we treat them we don't have an issue with it it's just yeah. it's a standard thing really you know 
Teg and Vicoxin. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And would you have noticed in the past, like Connor mentioned stress and stuff, like maybe disputing the calves or anything, would that have caused an issue? Yeah, well, like he said, like a wet night or something, like yeah. you might let them out and you think they're perfect and they could be for three or four days and you get a wet night and it's the next morning you're going to see that it's starting, it's getting black even down along the leg, do you know what I mean? Yeah. From the blood score. But it's, it mightn't even be that clear sometimes. It's like brown sometimes. It's not mm. necessarily mm. black straight away yeah. if you see them early enough. But yeah. once they have it, they have it. Like, but it, it's like nearly a piner when they get it. Like, it mm. really does. It takes a long time to come back from it, citrus. Yeah, and I think that's an important part of the message with Coxie, isn't it, Connor? That, like, it's not an individual animal disease. It's a group disease. And what you're seeing clinically is really only the tip of the iceberg. Tip of the iceberg, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's uh, any, any disease depends on the interaction between the, the, the individual animal, the disease, and the environment. So it's the ones that are under pressure. Uh, maybe lower immunity for some reason that w will have the very bad blood score but the rest of the group that they're there they have it as well and it will affect their ability to absorb nutrients and thrive so yeah. um, definitely it's a it's a group thing and if you missed it like it could be too late nearly by the time you realize the cox has been causing damage in yeah some so situation. well say once once the um once, once the intestinal wall is damaged you know like there'll be scarring on that wall so they won't have the same absorption area to um, absorb nutrients so by definition then they won't thrive as well you know yeah. but um, certainly for farms that have got on top of it and, and realized how to treat it it has made a huge difference in the in, in the bloom on the calves and also the thrive but also then reducing other things like pneumonia and, and, and stuff to go yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah basically if, if it's there and you're not getting on top of it it's kind of taken away from everything it's you're pulling, pulling into the, the calf yeah, yeah and yeah. it's really hitting that feed conversion efficiency as exactly. well isn't it that exactly. you're not going to get the yeah the most out of them. Um, and just saying as well, Connor, like diagnosing coxie or if someone's suspicious they have an issue, what's, what's the best way to go about getting to the bottom of that? Diagnosis is fairly straightforward. So, I mean, if you take a, a faecal sample or a dung sample, you know, they're readily uh, diagnosed either in the lab or by microscope or one of those new machines that are going out. They'll all diagnose coccidiosis. So uh, it's quite easy to see. Um, you can get low levels coming back routinely on, on, on faecal samples that you wouldn't be concerned about. But once you see a clinical case on, on a sample, you, like it's high levels of, of uh, oocytes on the sample. So. Yeah. And a lot of the, just to come back to the kind of principles behind treatment there and what you were saying where we want them to get a bit of exposure so they build up immunity, but we mm. want to get in before mm. they're, they're clinically unwell with it. That then probably determines, and it's part of a shame as the system, what the timing of, of treatment is. So yeah, it might be so, based on the history of the farm. Yeah, so I mean, if you know where exposure is, like essentially it's a three week life cycle, and you get rupture of the oocysts, um, that's a, probably about 14 to 16 days, 17 days. So 10 <coughs> to 12 days after exposure is the ideal time to treat because you'll have the, they'll be exposed and they'll be developing immune response to it for future exposure and you'll treat them before the damage is caused to the intestine. So that's where we'd be looking for. If you know you have an issue in a particular paddock or a particular shed, that, you know, get in there 10 to 12 days after they go in there, yeah. and then that should uh, And that that's should probably what happened issue. with your two, Seamus, as they went out to that paddock, and that paddock yeah. just has coccidiosis in it, and probably will for forever more. Well, I knew because we were busy at the time and the two were missed, but they were to be done, but sure, yeah. they were left and sure they got it. But it just takes a long time for a, an animal to get going again. As you said, the damage is done. So it's not as cheap in the long run to prevention is better than cure, exactly, in my eyes. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's another part of the problem with coxie, isn't it, Connor? is how well it's able to survive. Like, it'll survive away in a field from one year to the next. It'll survive away in the field. And even, like, we had farmers that would have steam washed sheds and, and disinfected them very hardy um, parasite um, and certainly very very difficult to um, to get rid of um, from from any building and obviously you can't disinfect the field so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and if you are to go about managing it in the shed you obviously do need to be aware of what type of disinfectant you yeah use i mean like it, the attention to detail would be very high compared to a normal cleaning of a shed you know you really have to get into all the crevices and use the appropriate disinfectant yeah, exactly. Well, I think, in fairness, Seamus, your calves are a testament to good coccidiosis management and the coxin a little bit. We'll, we'll take that one there. So it's great to see someone that's, you know, seen the effects of it, but now has a really good, solid control program. And you're more than convinced, and I'm sure telling others about how important it is to, 
to get in ahead of it and, and work on a preventative method as opposed to wait until you have a, have a mm. problem. Well, it's like I said, it's like the tag. It's the next thing around here. When they get the tag, they get the vicoxin, and that's it. But it's, it's prevention is better than cure because it's, it's, it's six to eight months the animal mm. before it starts coming back again. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's harder than an animal. Yeah. So that's my side of it, and I wouldn't change the animals with vicoxin. Brilliant. Okay, Connor. so I might just come back to you there again. Um, and we've spoke about Vicoxin and the importance of the timing with, with that. Is there other management strategies that someone might need to take into account if they're really under pressure with coccidiosis? Yeah, well, obviously there are areas on the farm if you have a big problem that are highly contaminated with coccidia. And I suppose you, the, the thing is you have to limit, either limit the exposure to young animals to these areas or try and modify them that they're less exposed. So. With sheds, you know, cleaning and disinfection, as we said, while it's difficult, it will reduce the exposure. And outside then, it tends to favour moist, uh, wet areas or muddy areas. So water troughs, gates, gaps, that sort of stuff, you know, uh, maybe improving the underfoot conditions there. So a lot of farmers would have, would say with sheep, would have um, um, 804 or similar stone fill under water troughs to, to, to keep the underfoot conditions correct. And moving troughs as well if you're feeding creep feeders or the likes if you move them to fresh area it avoids the build-up of of any parasite or any bacteria so those are things do help um i suppose the issue is that when they come back you know depending on the age of them when they come back into those areas and you tend to see your own sheds there's always paddocks around sheds that are used for young animals um that the, the exposure will be there so it depends on the farm but there's certainly things yeah. that can be done to help yeah uh, as well you know to, to yeah. decrease the load because the more of us is there yeah the well the difference in the high load and the low load is the high load is sometimes overwhelms the animal and, and you get severe disease that's yeah. that's that's hard to cure yeah. uh whereas you know with any disease if it's mild it's easier to cure you know yeah so. yeah exactly but ultimately and we probably said it a couple of times now like we do actually want them to get a bit of exposure you want to get exposure but you don't want to get um you don't want to get uh, that they're overwhelmed with exposure that they that they yeah. go down, and it's the same principle as it is with cryptosporidia or, or any of those diseases. You any know, infectious so infectious disease, yeah, yeah especially yeah. ones that build up like that in the yeah. in the environment. And just actually, James, come back to your uh, protocols again on it. Do you just do them once, or would you find you need a repeat treatment ever? No, once if they're yeah. done two to three weeks, I, I yeah. don't yeah. genuinely never have an issue with a problem again after that. Yeah, it's covered and done, which is a really good sign of how good the control program is working. Yeah, I'd say for people that need to repeat it, it's probably that they've gone in too soon, that they haven't been exposed. And, and I suppose that's where they need, that's where the one size fits, doesn't fit all, that you need to understand where they're getting exposed on the individual farm. Um, and, and, and then treat about 10 days after that if you can. So, yeah. um, there, like, it can be a bit of trial and error on that, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you have a history of it, you probably have a bit more mm. to, to work on. And definitely mm. always contact your vet to, to discuss mm. all of that, because... Mm. It can be a little bit complicated trying to figure out what, what's the best way to go about it. Um, but I think to be fair to Seamus' system, and we know it's working well, it's, it's a great sign of how when you do think about it and you're strategic, you're not having to use as much dose and, and then you're also in the long run, those animals are developing an immunity. And even if they meet coxie later on in the, the year, they're able to, to mm -hmm. cope with it. Um, just to, to move away from the calves then, um, Connor, lambs, Obviously, you get coxie as well, would you? Say yeah, they get coccidiosis, a different strain, obviously, than the ones that the calves get. Um, and we certainly see it on, on, on a number of farms. And again, it's linked in with immunity. So you can see outbreaks of coccidiosis in tandem with nematodiris, for example, if the, if the animals are under pressure. Um, I suppose there's been a good bit of work done on, on, on building up immunity in lambs. And if they are exposed in their first 48 hours, um, they will build an immunity to it, but that's the, there's a challenge in that because it's hard to get lambs out within the first 48 hours unless the weather is very, very good. Um, and oftentimes it's 72 hours before most of them get out. So um, again, we would see the most common thing you would see is that is, is a, a scour that looks like possibly nematodirus early on in spring. Um, you can have a lot of losses with lambs because it, 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 it just pulls the lamb down a little bit uh, immunity wise and you can see them having more cases of meningitis, pneumonia, things like that, that you may not relate mm -hmm. to coccidiosis unless you take a sample and maybe investigate mm -hmm. uh, a few post-mortem cases or whatever. So um, certainly farmers that, that have an issue know um, that it's something they have to keep on the radar. 
but um, oftentimes if you if if I say to farmers, if you think you're getting more bad luck than you than you than you deserve, is often a reason for it, and that would be one of the top three uh, reasons for poor performance in in the early early lamb's life. You know, so yeah. that'd be always something we'd be watching out for. It might kind of manifest as something different, but you might have yeah, to think there. like it may not show as the t mm. typical black scour. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's something to keep an eye on. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it might be that you're mm. thinking, is there an underlying stressor here, meaning I'm having more issues yeah. with this particular disease yeah. and, and coccidiosis? Is yeah, to, so to uh, on the faecal samples, there was huge levels of coccidia uh, oocysts. And we treated for the nematode virus first and then the coccidia subsided. So it is an immunity thing as well, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the coxin is fine to use in lambs as well. It is, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've had a great overview there of coccidiosis from a farmer and a vet's perspective. Just to finish off, we're going to take a few questions from the audience. So, Connor, I'm going to come to you first. Um, a question that we've had come in. I have a couple of calves with blood scour. What should I do about it? Well, uh, I suppose the, those calves in particular need to be treated. So. Uh, not alone do they need to be treated to kill the coccidiosis, it need to, you need to treat the clinical signs. So the clinical signs are, are fluid and blood loss. Um, so re replacement electrolytes would be an important part. Um, it's quite a painful condition, so uh, some painkilling medication. Um, if, they're, if they're running a temperature, it probably needs to be covered with antibiotics, but your vet will discuss that with you. And sometimes we, we would use uh, something to... Um, Ease the, pa ease the passage of fluid through the gut, so something like kaolin powder or other um, astringents. Um, once you have a couple of calves in a group with coccidiosis, then you can be sure that the entire group have it. So really and truly, they should be all treated um, for coccidiosis. Yeah, so yeah. again, not an individual animal thing. Exactly, yeah. A it's a group, group thing, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Um, Seamus, on to you then, uh, a question in, how much of a coccin are you using per calf? Well, I treat all our calves with about 40 ml per calf and once only. I don't have an issue after that. Yeah, and yeah. that's at the, in around the three weeks of age? About three weeks of age. Yeah. I, don't, I don't see the point in doing it any, when they're too young, do you know? Mm. So yeah. three, weeks, three weeks on, they will yeah. be done. Well, it'll be towards weight, so I mean, yeah. they'll be strong, surely suck to the calves, so they'll, yeah. be, they'll be heavy enough. That'll yeah. be yeah, a, yeah. a good dose for them. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and then just finally, Connor, uh, one question on the coxin. Uh, any restrictions on the weight of the calf that you can use it in or, or anything like that? With the no, it, it isn't very toxic, so you can use it right up to... We, we, we would often see calves with um, aged calves up to two months with uh, coccidiosis and you can treat accordingly to weight, so you're not restricted there. Um, and the same with lambs, so um, you can treat animals of all ages with it. Yeah. Brilliant, so you have great flexibility then mm. with, with using the coccin mm. basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, folks, so thanks a million for tuning in and joining us tonight. And thanks a million to Connor and Seamus for having us here on the farm today. Do tune in to our next episode, which will be all about the fundamentals of fertility. So thanks a million and good night.